Number 32, practical steam engines utilize 450 degrees steam, which is later exhausted at 270 degrees Celsius. What is the maximum efficiency that such a heat engine can have? All right. So basically, uh, when they say it exhausted heat here, or I should say it exhausted steam at a certain temperature, this would be like the temperature of the cold reservoir. And this would be like the temperature of the hot reservoir then, the steam, what the steam engine is utilizing, okay? So since they are asking us then to solve for the maximum efficiency, we know that the maximum efficiency is the Carnot efficiency. So this is going to be E sub C is equal to 1 minus temperature of the cold divided by temperature of the hot reservoir. So we simply have to just plug in, right? This one is fairly straightforward. So the temperature of the cold reservoir here was 270 degrees Celsius, but remember... We need it in Kelvin, so I gotta add the 273. Same thing with the temperature of the hot. It's 450 degrees Celsius, but you gotta add the 273 to it. All right? And let's do the math. So this is now one minus double parenthesis 270 plus 273 divided then by 450 plus the 273. <clears throat> and this is about all right, we get a value of about 0.249 uh, or so, 249, so about 24.9, a.k.a. 25%. All right, so that would be the maximum efficiency. Uh, letter B, since 270 degrees steam is still quite hot, a second steam engine is sometimes operated using the exhaust of the first. What is the maximum efficiency of the second engine if its exhaust temperature has a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius? All right, so this is letter A. So now basically letter B... Right, it's like, you know, it's like the final state here, the cold reservoir of the first part of the problem has now become the hot reservoir of the second part. It's like the final and initial states, like I'm sure you were used to dealing with back in, you know, kinematics was probably the biggest example of uh, stuff like that in terms of framing. So now, um, again, same formula, maximum efficiency, Carnot efficiency is going to be one minus the temperature of the cold divided by the temperature of the hot. The, um, <clears throat> okay, so now the temperature of the hot reservoir uh, was, go excuse me, cold reservoir was going to be 150 degrees Celsius, but remember we need that in Kelvin, so we got to add the 273 to that. And then divide it now by the temperature of the hot, and the hot reservoir was the 270, right, for this part of the uh, problem. Okay, whatever comes into the engine is considered the hot, and whatever leaves the engine is considered the cold. So that should be hopefully uh, straightforward. So this is 150 plus then the 273, then divide that whole thing now by 270 plus the 273. Don't forget to subtract that from one, and I get a value of about 0 0.221, 0 0.221. All right, so about 22.1%. So now, all right, what does part C now say? Part C now says, what is the overall efficiency of these two engines? Now. There's going, you know, whenever I start something like that, it's not going to be as straightforward as you thought, uh, or you might not have thought it was straightforward, which is great. But I think even in my mind, I feel like I should just simply add these two together, right? And if I add them together, I'm going to get my answer. Uh, percents are tricky that way, okay? So it's not going to unfortunately work that way. I can give you a simple example. Pretend that you have an item, all right, that's $100, and you read the sign and it says, sale, 50% off. Okay, so you say, oh, great. I'm going to buy this now. It was 100, but it's 50% off, right? So now it's going to be worth, or I'm going to pay $50. Great. And then they say, you know what? We're going to be extra generous. We're going to take another 50% off of the sale price. So you say, oh, great. Okay, 50% off of $50. What is that? That's about 25, right? So I'm going to pay only $25. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense, right? If you, So here's the thing, right? If you were to add up 50, so you took 50% off of the first one, the first item, and then you took another 50% off of, this, of the discounted price, right? So we had the two 50%. Well, what happens if you added these two percents up? You would get 100%, right? But wait a minute. If I told you this item is 100% off, which, by the way, you'll that'd be interesting if somebody phrases it that way. I haven't seen it phrased. Usually they'll, they'll say it's free. But another word would be to say it's 100% off, right? A, a sale of 100% off would be, well, if you start with 100 and it's 100% off, well, you pay nothing. You don't pay 25, right? That should make sense. 
So we cannot simply add percents together in this fashion. Just, and this problem is literally working that same way. We got these two percents, right? This part B worked off of part A because whatever the uh, cold temperature reservoir was here became the new hot reservoir, right? For the second part of the problem, just like this. This was the sale price of the first sale and then this became the basis for the second sale, okay? So you can see now clearly we cannot add these two together. But what's interesting here is that I can actually apply rules of probability uh, to this problem. And those of you who have taken probability, you can appreciate this. Those of you who can who have not might find it interesting. All right, I'm going to give you the formula, and uh, it interestingly works out. So and and it doesn't. And as you can see, it's not only a probability formula, right? That you might be saying, well, this isn't probability. Well, you're right, it's not. But the formula does come from probability, and you really won't see it used frequently anywhere else. But now you can use this, actually, for problems that you, uh, that it, even in a store, right? So this is how, you know, I know a lot of students, myself included, say, when am I ever going to use this? Well, it depends. You know, if you, think about, if you think about areas in which these concepts might apply, you might be surprised, right? So let me give you that formula from probability. So it's probability of A or B occurring would be equal to the probability of A occurring plus the probability of B occurring minus the probability of A and B occurring together. So this might look familiar. Now what I'm going to do is just adapt this for this problem, okay? Basically I can say um, the efficiency, watch this, ready? The efficiency, I'm going to, instead of probability, I'm going to write efficiency. The, the efficiency of uh, you know, engine one added to engine two will be equal to, it's not just a simple addition, you're going to have to do it exactly how I lay it out, is equal to the efficiency of engine one plus the efficiency of engine two minus the efficiency of engine one multiplied by engine two. Okay, and I'll actually break this part up. Engine one times the probability, uh, the efficiency of engine two. This is your formula. Hopefully you can see the similarity. Now watch, when I do this, this should, this should work out nicely. Okay, actually, why don't I first do it with this problem? Now you know if I asked you, what's the overall amount off, right, from the initial? You would tell me, well, if I started it at 100 and it cost me $25, that must mean it was 75% off, right? So you know this answer should come out to 75 overall. Well, let's see if this formula helps us. So watch. I'm, I'm basically saying that the uh, total amount off, all right, or the percent off here, this is that, right? I'm going to say that the total, the total percent off would be equal to the first percent, so 0.5, plus then the second percent of 0.5, minus now the first percent multiplied by the second percent, so 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. And now do this math in the calculator. Do 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. And what do you get? 75%, right? 0 0.75, look at that. So now anytime you hear a sale, right, whenever they say, you know, we'll take off sale, you know, we there is a... Um, you know, we're, we're discounting the item 20% and then take an additional 75% off, right? You're not saying it's not 100% off. You're going to say, well, I better take my 25%, add it to my 75%, and then subtract the multiplication of those two values. And you'll always arrive at then the overall percent off, all right? So anyway, applying it to this problem now. So you hopefully I'm kind of proving to you that it works here. So applying it to now this problem, it's going to be the efficiency of one and two together, meaning the total here is going to be the efficiency of one of 0.249 plus then the efficiency of number two, which is 0.221 minus then these two multiplied by uh, together. So 0.249 multiplied by 0 0.221. And what do we get? So let's do that in the calculator. So I'm going to do the exact answers. So I'm going to get that plus that other number, 0.2, and then minus now these two multiplied together. So I get that multiplied by that. So you get about point. So the efficiency of one and two together would be about 0 
And that's the efficiency now in total, okay? This is the total efficiency for the two engines, all right? So this is a unusual way to solve. There are many ways to solve this, all right? But I figured it might be an interesting time to make a connection, maybe to another subject. Um, anyway, letter D. Show that this is the same efficiency as a single Carnot engine operating between 450 and 150. So now this basically just says, hey, use this formula, which we could have done, which would have been the easier way to do it, but they wanted us to, to do it the hard way, is now to use this formula. It's the same formula we were using here and here, okay? It's going to be the 1 minus temperature of the cold divided by temperature of the hot. This would then equal 1 minus the temperature of the cold was going to be 150 degrees Celsius. Please add the 273 to that. And then divide that now by the 450 plus the 273. And look, lo and behold, what do we get? There's going to be 1 minus uh, 150 plus 273 divided by then 450 plus 273. And oh my goodness, 0 0.415. It's the, it's the identical answer. Now... That means that the math that's going on in here is identical to this math, right? Basically going on over here. So you might say they look totally different, which they do, right? They do look totally different. However, they are the same somehow. Why don't you challenge yourself? Try to figure out how this works out to this or how this works out to this somehow. And you can use variables, all right, to help you figure that out. So guys, that does it. All right, thanks for tuning in for this one. I hope this helped. Um, interesting way to solve it. I know some, uh, some students might have trouble with the way I explained it for letter C, um, but some students might also find it interesting. So in this particular case, you know, I wouldn't suggest actually for those of you who aren't following what I'm doing totally for letter C, you would definitely want to use the method for letter D. Okay, but those of you who have maybe taken probability or remember some of those formulas might find this interesting that, hey, wait a minute, I thought that was probability. How is that exactly? It's uh, probabilities are basically ratios and percents. And so is this problem. That's how they're similar. And that's why we can basically use similar formulas. Okay, there are some assumptions. I'm simplifying it a little bit um, that, that, go, that go into what I'm talking about, but trying to keep it fairly, fairly straightforward. All right, guys. So thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we will see you soon. Take care.